the first punic war part two hello everyone it's god here back with another video if you are new here please help me out hit that subscribe button i'm getting close to 1000 subscribers so so please guys help me get there i really appreciate it without wasting any time let's get right into it After the gigantic battle at Cape Ecnomis, the Romans were now free to land on African soil. And so, they did. The Carthaginians chose to focus on defending the city of Carthage itself. Mm. So the Romans immediately took the city of Aspis and were then free to raid and plunder the countryside. They took over 20,000 slaves and a ton of booty. Oh, but then, but some orders arrived <laughs> from the Senate. Send home but the booty. booty. Oh, but I want to stay. No, Steve, not you. They mean the treasure. Well, we are. I was saying, I was saying it was real booty. Filth. Oh, real booty. So the other consul left with the booty, leaving Regulus and booty. his forces on their own, and they began advancing uh, towards Carthage. My accents, man. Along the way, according to the ancient writer Livy, they encountered a literal dragon. Now, really? Livy was a Roman historian, so his account may be slightly exaggerated, but this. I believe as the Romans continued to plunder, the Carthaginian people flooded into the city. Now, not only was it in a major panic, but it was so crowded, the people began to starve. Don't hmm. panic, everyone! Look, I know you're all starving, <laughs> but I still have food for me. So, you know, it's not all bad. Whoa! You're wasting your tomatoes! And you Wonder why you're starving? Oh well, it's just more food for me. Oh, nom, nom, nom. Uh... Nom, nom, nom. Things weren't looking good for Carthage. They had to do something to stop the Romans rampaging throughout their land. So they decided, finally, it was time to put an end to it. They headed out and set up on rough hilly terrain overlooking the Roman camp, and they prepared for battle. Now, while the Carthaginians were the traditional masters of the sea, on land, they weren't always the brightest. Case in point, setting up in this position overlooking the Roman camp was just about the stupidest thing they could have done. <laughs> Why? Well, there's something you gotta understand about Carthage. The Carthaginian land forces actually suffered from a multitude of different issues. First of all, since the Carthaginians were rich, 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 they could afford to pay a huge number of foreign mercenaries to fight for them. These mercenaries actually made up the vast majority of Carthage's forces, hmm. and therefore, Carthage's land armies were a melting pot of many different cultures. This, however, meant that if a battle wasn't going their way, they can, could be yeah, they can switch. Man, I ain't getting paid enough for this. <laughs> you Balearic slingers better not be thinking of running away. What did he say? I don't know, man. I don't speak Phoenician. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Clearly, there were also language issues. Uh, the military generals okay. tended to be Carthaginian, but they made a lot of strange decisions. For example, one of the most feared assets of the Carthaginian army were the war elephants. To a Roman soldier who had never even seen an elephant Really? Before, this was like fist fighting. I've never seen an elephant monster. before. Yet the Carthaginians continually kept placing the elephants in the rear, where they were no use. In a similar fashion, the neighboring region of What's Numidia that? What's provided. That? What's that? <laughs> Yet the Carthaginians continually kept placing this the guys, in the This guy, this guy will kill me. I feel like I'm always waiting for my big break. <laughs> oh God! In a similar fashion, the neighboring region of Numidia provided Carthage with the most skilled cavalrymen in the world. But the Carthaginians often chose to fight on rough, uneven terrain, where horses and elephants were less effective. And so, so dumb. in this case, when the Carthaginians again chose the rough terrain near the Roman camp, the Romans easily sent them packing. Ooh. Wow, Regulus, we're mere miles from Carthage. You sure are amazing. I mean, don't tell me it was this easy for them. I know. <sighs> Steve? What's the matter? We've almost won. I just wish Guys, everything could... looks so easy for the Romans so far. I know there were some hiccups, but immediately, at, immediately they were able to get their shit together. They were, uh, they have, they have been, they have been acing it so far. It looks very easy. It can't be this easy, right? I mean, this is, this, this is uh, obviously a, a, a historical war. So, 
I, I guess there had to be something. There had to be something that is coming. It can't just be so easy for the romance like this. Be as great as you, Regulus. Steve, you're amazing. I mean, look at this thing. It's unbelievable. Everything was looking up for Regulus. Mm. A Roman victory seemed like it was only a matter of time. But then Regulus realized something. He had been consul for almost a year, and his term was coming to an end. He knew that if his successor took uh, over, and he would take the glory, the job, yeah. Then he would get the naked. Can you imagine that? Not Regulus. And there was no way Regulus was going to allow that. So he jumped the gun. You there, Carthaginian boy. I want you to deliver a message to your elders. I, Marcus Attilius Regulus, demand the total and unconditional surrender <laughs> of Carthage. Unconditional surrender? Jeez, at least lay siege and start <laughs> death first. Just deliver the message, you punk. He demands your total surrender. What? Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us that's what I said. first. Hey, that's what I said. <laughs> well, boys, this Roman thinks we're out. But we're not out, are we, boys? No. We'll do what we always do in times like this. Hire somebody else to solve our problems for us. Darren, bring in the Spartan. Well. Regulus's overly harsh demands had had the unintended effect of reinvigorating Carthaginian resolve. They brought in a mercenary from the famed land of Sparta wow. named Xanthippus to help dig them out of this situation. And we all know what Spartans are like. Xanthippus showed up and immediately took charge. He had to look around and said, You idiots, put the elephants in front of the army <laughs> so they can smash into the Romans and stop fighting on rough, uneven terrain. Find a big flat field so your superior cavalry can do their job. And what's this I hear about you giving a speech telling everyone they're going to die? Hey, I was just telling the people the truth. You're a politician. <laughs> Lie to the people. <laughs> And so Xanthus uh, that's what I was supposed to do anyway. An army to meet Regulus in the Battle of the Bagradas River. The elephants, now in the front, smashed into the Roman lines, causing disarray. The cavalry, with total freedom of movement, mm. outflanked the Roman infantry. Ooh. Thanks to this impressive Spartan, the battle was a total Carthaginian victory. Hmm. And Xanthus, for his stunning victory, was forced to flee Carthage because the leadership got jealous. What? Regulus, the Roman consul, <laughs> was captured during the battle. Legend has it, he was brought before the Carthaginian council. Can you imagine that? They, they were jealous. Proposition. Well, Reggie, not looking so good anymore, is it? Looks like we beat you pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Up yours, you punic <laughs> Green spits. Now, now, Regulus, <laughs> nobody likes a sore loser, do they? No. How about this? We're gonna send you back to Rome, and you convince the Roman Senate to surrender to us. If you fail, I, though, I, I doubt he did that. So I doubt he did that. Okay, okay. You promise? Promise. I promise. Hey guys! Whoa, Regulus! We thought you got captured. I did, but they sent me back to convince you to surrender. Oh, well, he did that. Surrender? Really? No, never surrender. Give him hell, boys. They're at the end of their rope. Anyway, I gotta go be tortured to death now. What? Yep, part of a deal I made. It's a long story. Whoa, hey, wait, Regulus. No, no, it's cool, guys. I promised. Regulus. This is ancient times. We massacre entire populations. We chop pets in half. You can break a promise. No, Tim. You never break a promise. <laughs> That's too far. And so, Regulus went back wow. to Carthage and was tortured to death. What the fuck? And for keeping his promise, he was immortalized as the leading symbol of Roman virtue. What? After their defeat in Africa, the remaining Roman survivors. Oh, wait, 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 wait. guys, guys, I'm so Africa. shocked by that. I'm so shocked. Even, even, I, I wouldn't do it. Like, immediately you free me. You're not seeing me anymore. <laughs> You're not seeing me anymore. Immediately you free me. You're not seeing me. And, and while I was, as I was watching the video, I was trying to predict what, what, um, what would happen. I would have never guessed that this regulars would have actually gone back. I thought what he was trying to do when he was saying that he wants to go back, I thought he was like playing some mind games or something. I never imagined that he could actually like go back and get tortured to death. 
That is crazy. What? Meanwhile, after their defeat in Africa, the remaining Roman survivors, still in Africa, were still in Africa, and they needed to be rescued. So the Romans sent their fleet to pick him up and bring him home. They successfully fended off a Carthaginian fleet, grabbed the survivors, and made their way to Sicily. A great success. Hmm. But then, things took a turn for the Whoa. worse. Uh, sir, that cloud looks kind of angry. Fear not, coward. If we Romans can build a war fleet from scratch and defeat the Carthaginian Empire at their own game, why then even Mother Nature herself will crumble before us. I laugh in the face of Mother Nature. Ha <laughs> ha! See? Come on, guys. Laugh at Mother Nature with me. Ha ha! Ha ha! 284 ships. Whoa! Nearly 80% of the Roman fleet was destroyed. Jeez! As many as 100,000 people drowned in a terrifying act of nature. Never before had Rome lost so what many the hell? in a single incident. What the hell? Like, that is, guys, that is so shocking. I know, I understand that uh, <laughs> nature is very, 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 very brutal. I understand that. But I, <laughs> this video is actually really, really um, uh, shocking me because, you know, why, 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 why you are watching a video, you are trying to predict what, what would happen, what you think may happen. And so far, I've not been able to predict a lot of important stuff. I, I couldn't have ever imagined that a storm, like, I know a storm can kill that, that many people. I get that. But I just didn't think it would be, that would be the story. I just didn't think so. Seriously. A hundred thousand casualties for any other nation would be crippling. Any other nation would hastily sue for peace. Any other nation would spend not the romance trying to recover. <laughs> but Rome was not just any other nation. Infamous for its unrelenting determination in the face of overwhelming odds, Rome said, well, I guess we'll just have to build another fleet. And they did. In just three huh. months, they built 220 wow. more ships. An astonishing feat. The Romans sent out their brand spanking new war fleet and... No, no way, no way. They got caught in another storm. What? This time, a whole nother fleet was lost. What and the fuck? Still, the Romans did not give up. The Carthaginians couldn't believe it. Their enemy had just lost hundreds of thousands of men, had two fleets almost entirely destroyed, what? and they still wouldn't surrender. As one Roman poet put it, the victor is not victorious if the vanquished does not consider himself so. Hmm. In typical Roman fashion, after a short break, they were once again building another what the fleet. fuck however for now after all the disasters at sea the focus began shifting back to the land campaign in sicily the carthaginians overconfident from recent successes attempted to retake panormus but the romans countered the terrifying war elephants by throwing stuff at them and <laughs> scaring them away oh, the <laughs> stopped the carthaginian advance the road was now open to the final carthaginian stronghold <sighs> on the island wait the wait, wait 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 that is very funny. Seriously. Like they just threw some stuff on the elephants and they ran away. <laughs> then why didn't they why 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 wasn't that done initially when the, the the elephants were used to crush the Romans? Why didn't they why didn't they think about that? <laughs> because you know, at the end of the day, a lot of these animals are you know compared to human beings that are kind of stupid. So I mean they may be stronger, but I mean, you could you could make them to 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 run away like like they just like they just did now. Wow. Byam. Lily Byam was an extremely well fortified city. In 250 BC, the Romans laid siege. The Carthaginian defense, however, was fierce, and skilled blockade runners kept the city supplied. Progress was so slow that the siege would last another nine years. To make matters worse, the Carthaginians later sent possibly the greatest military general of the time, a man named Hamilcar Barca, huh. to the I've never heard his name before. He engaged in a skillful campaign of guerrilla warfare behind enemy or one lines, of the greatest ever. And for the remainder of the war, he was a major thorn in the Roman side. 
For now, with the Deadlock Siege at Lilibium and the new Roman fleet at sea, things seem to be at a standstill, and the Romans had to do something to break the deadlock. Thankfully, the Roman consul, Clodius Pulcher, had an idea. He tried to get things moving by attacking the Carthaginian fleet at Trapana. Now, before a battle, to predict if they would win, it was common for the Romans to look for signs from the gods. This could mean observing <laughs> the weather or inspecting some cow leaves. <laughs> you know, typical religion stuff. In this case, Pulcher reportedly tried to feed some sacred chickens, but unfortunately Did for them, they wouldn't eat a crumb. A very bad sign. <laughs> well, he said, if they won't eat, then let them drink, stupid chickens! We'll observe the weather instead. Gods, give me a sign. Uh, ignore that. <laughs> okay, how about this? If I can get this piece of paper into that trash basket, we'll win. Okay, if I can stand here silently for five seconds, <laughs> so and relentless. Do nothing, we'll win. <laughs> Pulcher chose to ignore the signs from the gods, and in the following battle, the superior Carthaginians tore them to shreds. Damn. It also didn't help that by now the Romans had removed the Corvus to stabilize their ships, and without their secret weapon, it was a disaster, and Pulcher was disgraced. To make matters worse, the victorious Carthaginian fleet then went on to intercept a Roman supply fleet on its way to Lilibium. As they approached, however, they saw the signs of an incoming storm, so they took shelter. The Romans, on the other hand, said, Onward, men! Set sail! I'm We've got seriously, this is supplies stat Like, sir. I, I don't know how to call this um, bravery or stupidity. Seriously, like, I get that um, bravery is commendable. But this is... Like, I'm seeing a lot of dumb, dumb decisions by the Romans here. It's almost like they were, they were brave to a fault. Like, they were determined and brave to a fault. There are, there are points in which you retreat and, you know, regroup or something. It's not just every time. Oh, oh, go, go, go. Ah, that is dumb. Those clouds. Don't you think we ought to have learned our lesson by now? Yes. But we still go. We ought to have. But we haven't another fleet and 50,000 men lost what the in hell another storm disaster now at this point there still really isn't a clear winner sure the romans have captured most of sicily and cornered the carthaginian land forces at lilibium but the continued disasters at sea were critically depleting their resources and without a strong fleet rome could not win meanwhile hamilcar barca was still knocking about and creating even more problems so where do we go from here? How does this war finally end? By now, the two sides had been fighting for 23 years. They were exhausted. 23 their money, years. Their resources, Damn. their strength were all utterly spent. The Carthaginians in particular were eager to see the war end so they could get back to trading <laughs> and making money. So after the latest Roman disaster at sea, they said, look, there ain't no way in heck the Romans can come back again. They can't possibly afford to build another fleet. Are you They're sure done. about that? That's it. Are you sure about Recall that? the Navy, repurpose them as merchant ships, and let's get back to making some money. Mm. Assuming the Romans would soon make peace, an anti-war faction within the government recalled a large portion of the Navy, leaving Hamilcar on his own. The victors appeared to be declaring themselves victorious. Meanwhile, the vanquished were getting ready for round five. <laughs> the Romans built another fleet, what the this hell? time heavily relying on patriotic donations from the upper classes to afford it. Damn. And once again, they put to sea. Uh, sir, the Romans have built another fleet. Oh, for <laughs> sake, Clarence, can't you see I'm busy rolling around in this pile of money? But, sir, I don't care anymore, Clarence. I just don't. Care. The Carthaginian politicians made a fairly lackluster final effort with a poorly built fleet to supply their forces in Sicily. But when the brand new Roman fleet caught them at the Battle of the Agates, even without their signature Corvus, they dealt them the final blow. And that was that. 23 years of war. Neither side could afford to keep fighting, but the Romans showed that they intended to anyway. The Carthaginians had no choice but to throw in the towel. Wow. The war had been long and hard for both sides, but in the end, it was Roman determination that won the fight. The Romans had spent the entire war trying to find a way to deliver the knockout blow, 
They learned how to build a fleet and engage in naval combat. They wow. developed ingenious new ways of waging war. They attempted an invasion of the Carthaginian heartland, and whenever disaster struck them, they always came back again. This is incredible, again. actually. The Carthaginians, on the other hand, spent the entire war watching whatever Rome did, and then figuring out. It's incredible, but dumb. It's incredible. You know, sometimes when you do, when you make dumb decisions, if it turns out to be right, of course, it, of course, you look like a genius. But if if if, if you are wrong, then you are dumb and you are stupid. So since the Romans won, I guess that genius is wrong, right? Respond. They were much more passive, and so it's no wonder then that when both sides were close to collapse, Rome was the one who figured out how to go that little bit further. In 241 BC, the Carthaginian politician sent word to Hamilcar Barca that he was on his own and could choose to make peace with the Romans if he wished. Hamilcar was stunned. He felt betrayed by the politicians. Some sources say he refused to even negotiate. Nevertheless, terms had to be drawn up. Well, Hammy, I'm glad you Carthaginians have finally come to your senses and recognized who the true winner is. How many fleets did you lose? No, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> here are terms. You leave Sicily to us and return Oh, to God, these guys are just are fun, man. to make war against Syracuse or her allies, <sighs> and you have to pay us 2,200 talents of silver over the next 20 years. What's a talent of silver? Well, to put it in perspective, in the year 2022, that'll be worth around, let's say, 40 million US dollars. Ay, caramba! That will cripple us! Wow, we got a real smart guy over here. Yeah, that's kind of the point, you dingus. Ugh, I guess I have no choice. I accept. Great! Oh, by the way, we changed our minds. You actually have to pay us 3,200 talents of silver over 10 years. Thanks for accepting. Dude! See you later. Hey, hey! You didn't let me say on cool! He didn't let me stay on cool. The treaty was extremely punishing, and by switching up the terms at the last minute, they enraged <gasps> the Carthaginians. But still, one of the longest and deadliest wars at the time was finally over. The Romans had won. They achieved their aim of gaining Sicily, and even though it wasn't part of the peace deal, they took advantage of a weakened Carthage and grabbed Corsica and Sardinia as well. I mean, Roman Sicily is part of Italy now. The peninsula had just begun. The Romans hoped that now the Carthaginians would forever be under their thumb. Unfortunately, the harsh terms they placed on the Carthaginians at the end of the war left a growing anger, one that would come back to haunt them. One day, Carthage will have its revenge. That's nice, dear. I'm serious, woman. Maybe not in my lifetime, but perhaps in his. My beautiful son. Who is this son? You are born into a momentous destiny. You shall be Rome's greatest enemy. Who is he? You'll tear Rome limb from limb. You'll burn their pathetic city into the ground. You'll slaughter their people. Men, women, and children. My child, you are <laughs> vengeance. Stop telling our baby he's vengeance. But he is, Barbara. He's vengeance. That may be so someday. But for now, our son has a name. And you should call him that instead. His name is... Oh. Oh, okay. There was another war. Wow. Guys, that was confusing towards the end. Uh, when I saw the name Hannibal, I was like, "What? The only Han the only Hannibal that I know is Hannibal. Hannibal well, is Hannibal Lecter. That is the serial killer, right? And that and it didn't exist in real life. That was fiction. If I if, if I think right, it was fiction. So when I saw the name Hannibal, I was like, "What? I was confused. <laughs> so I guess they were." Okay, I guess, I guess there were other Hannibals before, but okay, maybe the Hannibal Lecter's name was derived from all these other people that uh, that answered that their names were Hannibal. Okay, so Hannibal, so there, there was another war. Okay, that would be interesting. Can't wait for, can't wait to see that one. Um, you know, about simplify makes videos after a couple of months, so who knows? Probably see it towards the end of next year. <laughs> Uh, which and he deserves to take the, all the time he needs because the videos are ex excellent. Um, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I, this was like 
human beings the, the reason why I, I like watching all these war videos you know um is all is because <sighs> human beings have always fascinated me in terms of uh conflicts you know every time when people always try to fight for stuff things that you may feel are f- frivolous you, like are not really that important human beings fight for it i mean it's just like it's almost like when you see gang gang people fighting over uh, neighborhoods that they don't own you know and sometimes you sit down and think about so what the hell are you doing killing yourself over some neighborhood that you don't even own so it's it's always it's always very very interesting though it's always very interesting. like human beings just that kind of violence kind that kind of violence to if if we are being if we are being honest anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the reaction i'll see you in the next one take care peace